Today on The Hookup, we're gonna take a look at the entire Shelly Switch lineup. And I'm gonna show you five awesome ways to use them that you might not have thought of before. Here we go. If you don't know what Shelly's are, they're these impossibly small devices that install behind your existing switches to give them smart functionality. If you think that sounds a bit like a Sunoff, you might want to check out my most viewed video of all time, which was a comparison between the Sunoff Basic and the Shelly One. Back then, Shelly was just starting out, and they were focused primarily on launching their app and developing their new Shelly One module. A little over a year later, and the Shelly brand has absolutely taken off. The Shelly app is now feature rich with timers, schedules, tons of options, and even in-app automations, and their lineup has expanded significantly as well. There's no doubt that Shelly makes quality products, but Shelly's biggest strength is their commitment to listen to their customer base and work tirelessly to deliver products and features requested by the home automation community. Here's the current Shelly lineup, not including sensors. From left to right, we've got the original Shelly 1, the Shelly 1 PM, the Shelly 2.5 in both UL and non-UL listed varieties, the Shelly Dimmer, and finally the Shelly RGBW2. Each of these devices has a specific use case, but they've also got quite a bit in common. All Shelly products use Wi-Fi and therefore don't need a hub. They can be integrated to work together via the Shelly app, or you can disable the cloud server completely and use them locally with MQTT and a home automation hub like Home Assistant or OpenHab. They are still the only mass market device that natively supports local MQTT control, meaning you don't need to fumble around with custom firmware or flashing. It all works right out of the box with a factory Shelly firmware. I keep my Shelly devices on my Network of Things VLAN, which means that they have no communication with the internet whatsoever and they still function perfectly. However, if you still want to install custom firmware, they're all supported by Tasmoda and they have exposed programming headers so you never need to take them apart or do any soldering. Despite their similarities, these devices do have different intended uses. The original Shelly 1 is the only Shelly that has a completely isolated relay, sometimes called a dry contact. This means that even though the module itself can be powered with 110 to 260 volts AC or 12 to 48 volts DC, the actual relay has no voltage on it. That means it can be used to switch low voltage or even simulate a button press like on a garage door opener for instance. I use a Shelly 1 in low voltage mode to interrupt the power wire going to my Christmas tree's built-in LEDs, and that allows me to automate them without cutting power to the control unit, since doing so causes the lights to default to the off state after power loss. Since the Shelly has dry contacts, I could have just as easily simulated a button press with the Shelly's relay to be able to switch between the lighting modes on this tree as well. The Shelly 1PM adds power monitoring, but at the expense of the dry contact. In addition to power monitoring, the Shelly 1PM also features an internal temperature sensor that can shut down the relay in the event that the load on the circuit is too great and it's generating too much heat. The Shelly 1PM's single relay is rated for 16 amps or 3500 watts, so it's a great option if you need to switch a particularly heavy load. If you don't need all that load capacity, you can opt for the dual relay Shelly 2.5, which is what I would consider Shelly's flagship product. The Shelly 2.5 has two 10 amp circuits with individual power monitoring, the same internal temperature sensor and protection of the Shelly 1PM, built-in roller shutter control and functionality, and it's fully UL certified. There are two individual switch inputs on the Shelly 2.5, making it even more versatile. The Shelly 2.5 is the most widely used device in my smart home, and here are some of my favorite uses for it. In my bedroom, I've got a DIY LED controller that wakes me up every day with an awesome sunrise effect. But since there's multiple effects to control and it's nowhere near a switched circuit, I would be stuck controlling it with my phone or Amazon Echo only. But by installing a Shelly behind the switch panel, I can use the state of the attached switch to turn the LED strip on and off via an automation. I'm personally using Home Assistant to connect these devices, but it would actually be able to do them directly from the Shelly web UI using the actions menu. In my dining room, I was able to repurpose a few light switches that were meant to control my porch and carriage lights, which now have smart bulbs in them. Instead of getting one of those ridiculous switch guards that prevent people from flipping the switch, you can use a Shelly 2.5 in detached switch mode. This allows the relays to remain attached to the lighting circuit as required by electrical code, but it allows you to use the physical switches to control whatever you want, like triggering an automation that controls other Wi-Fi connected lights in my dining room. In my daughter's room, I took it one step further. The three light switches in her room are wired to a ceiling fan, her ceiling fan light, and a switched outlet. 
It always seemed a little silly to me to have to flip two switches to turn on the everyday lights in her room. And when she recently got a room makeover that included underbed LEDs and nano leaf light tiles on her wall, it was annoying not to have a switch for those lights. Using the power of Home Assistant, Node Red, and a couple of Shelly devices, I can now flip the first switch to digitally activate the relays on the switch for her ceiling fan light and her floor lamp together. And then I can use the other switch to trigger an automation that turns on her nano leaf tiles and her underbed lights. To add one more awesome level of customization, I also made it so that if you turn on the nano leaf switch first, the lights will come on pink and purple. But if you flip on the main room lights and then you flip on the nano leaf lights, they come on as warm white. Your imagination is the only limit when using Home Assistant, and Shelly's are my favorite devices that enable this kind of functionality, because they're simple, they're unobtrusive, and they work right out of the box. The next device we're going to look at is the RGBW2, a Wi-Fi LED controller that provides PWM control for up to four channels of low voltage AC or DC LEDs. The RGBW2 is the only Shelly device that we're going to see today that doesn't run off of mains AC voltage. Instead, it accepts either 12 volts or 24 volts depending on the type of LEDs that you're driving. Most people will probably end up using the RGBW2 to control LED strips like I've done under my daughter's bed, but it can also be used to control up to four channels of 12 volt or 24 volt white LED spotlights. Back when I did my initial review of the RGBW2, I decided to test how it would perform in my DIY 8 channel ceiling light. And I was so impressed with its reliability and functionality that I ended up just leaving it connected. The obvious shortcoming is that there's only four channels of control instead of eight, but I connected two spotlights in parallel for each channel to be able to control all eight spotlights. The last device and the newest device in the Shelly lineup is the Shelly Dimmer, a triac based dimmer that connects to mains power and can dim up to 200 watts of dimmable LEDs or halogen bulbs. The Shelly Dimmer comes in two different types, standard and SL. The standard version requires a neutral connection like all the other Shelly products that we've looked at today. And the Shelly Dimmer SL is the first Shelly device that can be installed without a neutral connection. Unfortunately, only on 220 volts so far, so no luck for us Americans on 110 yet. The Shelly Dimmer can of course be installed behind a switch for a more traditional functionality, but I think its best applications are a little less traditional. If you install a Shelly dimmer behind an unswitched receptacle, you can pop the hot wire tab and have a single dimmed outlet where you could plug in a power strip or an extension cord and dim multiple lamps at the same time. But that got me thinking, why go to all the trouble to install a Shelly dimmer behind an outlet if you need to install an extension cord to realize the full functionality? So I whipped up a quick 3D printed housing for the Shelly dimmer and I installed it in line on an extension cord. Now I have a portable, Wi-Fi controlled, dimmable circuit that can dim all the lights connected to it at once. I'm using it in my living room where I have a floor lamp, a desk lamp, and two up lights that get turned on every day as ambient lighting around dusk. From about 5pm to 7pm my family is still really active so we like the lights at full brightness. But after my daughter goes to bed and my wife turns on the TV and I sit down at my computer to work on YouTube, we want the lights a little more subdued. Since these lights aren't connected to a switched outlet, that would require six smart bulbs to dim them, or a single Shelly dimmer. I'm regulating the dimming level based on time of day in Node Red, but the Shelly app also allows for dimming schedules and a night mode where the brightness of a lamp is automatically adjusted based on the time of day. If you're only trying to dim a single lamp, the Shelly dimmer is actually small enough that it can be installed in the base of about a medium sized lamp. In fact, there are a ton of uses for the Shelly Dimmer that I'm sure I haven't even thought of yet. Before I end this video, I'm going to borrow a move from the Paul Hibbert playbook, and I'm going to respond to a comment that I absolutely know is coming. And that's that the Shelly devices are more expensive than the Sonoff devices. And it's true. But it's not like the Shelly devices are overpriced, or even expensive. It's just that the Sonoff devices are impossibly cheap. That being said, I don't think anyone will disagree with me that the Shelly lineup is significantly higher quality than the Sunoffs, and the customer service is top notch, especially on their Facebook support page, where you can regularly find their CEO, Dimitar, responding to customer posts. If you've got a favorite use for your Shelly devices that you think everybody else should be using too, make sure to let us know down in the comments. Also, I finally set up a Facebook page for the hookup where you can hopefully go to get help with all the projects that are featured on this channel. If you're struggling with completing one of the projects on my channel, come on over and ask your questions on the Facebook page and hopefully get some quick answers. Also, if you've completed my projects and you might be able to help out with some of those questions when I'm not around, I'd appreciate it if you came over and joined as well.
Thank you to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're not a patron but you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.